Ah, are we live, ah. Mr. Warner? I think we are. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good How afternoon. are you? Good afternoon to everybody who is viewing, listening, talking, chatting. I know for many of the people at Abergavenny who are linking in, they know my ugly face for many years now. But we have a handsome man on the program as well today, Mr. Michael Warner, or Mike Warner, as I call him. When, when's he joining on us? Seafood, definitely somebody to reckon with. And I have learned a million and one things from this man, and I'm still learning. Mike We're is... Right the, yes, thank you, Mike. But at the moment, Mike heads the Welsh Seafood uh, Promotion Board. And uh, we have worked together, done a little video on Welsh seafood. So as you will see in a little while, but the whole idea is to promote more Welsh seafood. And I think this year we had planned a nice big show together to make sure that the Welsh public got to see exactly what actually comes out as a resource from Wales, but is not generally as appreciated or as valued as we would like it to be. But Mike is the man to ask any questions you want about Anything from cockles and clams to lobsters and other fish that are abundant around the coastline. For me, of course, it's part of the recipe and my love and our love as, I mean, I would say mine, but our entire brigade of Cafe Spice Namaste has always loved Abergavenny and we've been, God knows now, we missed the 22nd year of our coming, 21 years and coming. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Mike, what do you reckon we should be chatting about on in terms well, of... Well, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, there's so much to chat about, isn't there? As, as, as the, our participants will, and those who are joining, will see in the video, um, and here in the video, there's just so much uh, in terms of Welsh seafood to enjoy, um, and seasonally as well. You know, there's stuff coming on all different times of the year. But you're a veteran of Abergavenny, and um, this was going to be my first year. So I'm, I'm really sort of, A, disappointed that we're not there, but, um, but also delighted to be included in, uh, in this today because uh, it sounds a fab fabulous event. And, uh, you know, I really, really would have loved to have been there with you on stage um, doing what we, we do in the video. So um, bring, bring it on next year. Yeah, in 21 years of going there, Mike, we've only ever had maybe three to four years of bad weather. It's amazing that it, God has been really kind to us when we go there. And occasional rainfall, but never as bad as the last couple of years we've had a bit of a problem. But Abergavenny yeah, has always done extremely well with the weather. So it's a fabulous show. You have to come next year because you'll really enjoy the hospitality. And I mean, the people there are just amazing. We go back again and again for the people. The team is getting older. We're all going gray and, you know, a bit uh, ashen, <laughs> as you can see. But uh, it's just for the love of Abergavenny and people around. I mean, they make the show the success it is. And you always yeah, come away with new sure. products and new produce, meeting new people. So I think next year we shall make it quite a big thing on the stage and try and enjoy yeah, as much and bring more seafood to the people to taste and to relish. Well, I think that's, um, that's great. I mean, I had about 12, 12 food festivals booked. In, uh, for those people who don't know me, by the way, I'm Mike, Mike Warner, a uh, seafood ambassador, um, sometimes fisherman, seafood supplier uh, and storyteller. And so I, I pretty much connect um, seafood um, and the fishing communities to the consumer. Um, so that's what I'm here to do. And Cyrus and I have worked together for a few years now doing these sorts of things. But yeah, just to get back to the festival, um, would be delighted to be there next year and uh, really excited already about it. But I think um, we've, got, we've got a little video prepared, haven't we, Cyrus, that we, we shot We've got a little video ago. prepared, yes. And, and I think we made for the earlier. very first time in my career, I've used Welsh lobsters. And the best is part really? is, lobsters come in banded with a strange yellow colored band on their claws. That's right. Wales, Wales has gone one step ahead. Yeah. We've got it banded with Welsh seafood written on it. Exactly. That's banded fantastic. and branded, they call it. Yeah, it's branding. It's a great idea, isn't it? Great. Yeah. And the colors were just amazing. The meat was fantastic, of course. Yeah. But I think uh, if our uh, operators are ready, then we can go on to the video. And uh, yeah, I hope people enjoy it. We are here. Any questions? Anything people wish to know? Mr. Kim Waters, the Absolutely, great just fire away. will ask us. So fire away, Mr. Wat Waters. All the best. And enjoy the video, folks. Enjoy. See you later everyone welcome to 
a very unusual Abergavenny Food Festival 2020. Yes, we are not going to be there at the show this year because there isn't a show, but we'll try and do our best to make your viewing pleasures as exciting and as informative as possible. With me today is Mike Warner, who's, who's the chairman of the Welsh, uh, what do you call it, Seafood, seafood Board? Development, yeah, Welsh Seafood Development Committee. And today what we're trying to do is to highlight the great Welsh seafood, so to speak. The emphasis is on shellfish, because whilst we do know that Wales does harvest bass and other fish, the emphasis is on shellfish because we find that shellfish is the least consumed of all our marine resources across the United Kingdom. And Mike and I have been trying to emphasize this point for a long time. Of course, he is right in the front in the battleground and telling people and educating people. But we do try our best. So there are three, four things we'll do today quickly. First of all, of course, these beautiful beast lobsters. So I'm going to do a baked lobster. Lovely. Almost, uh, almost thermidor, but not thermidor because I've got no mustard in the sauce sure. as well. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not going to flambe it, but I am going to you glaze it with some of these best cheddar cheese in the country, the Barber's, you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So Barber's cheese, and uh, then we are going to make a. While scallops are not fully in season, we have these lovely scallops in. So we are going to do a scallop, egg, and potato curry. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll have a curry to be done. We are going to do a quick crab salad. So we're going to do two crab salads. We got these beautiful dressed crabs, as you can see. Okay. Yeah, we got dressed crabs here. As you can see, the meat is beautiful. It's well presented. The meat is absolutely exceptional. It's quite important to emphasize the fact that um, of all the shellfish that we're, we're looking at around the Welsh coastline, which I think probably extends for nearly 900 miles, um, all this shellfish is available from north to south. Um, and it's a, it's it's a commodity that's been exported traditionally. 95% yeah. of, of Welsh seafood production goes abroad. So we've got to make use of it um, in, our, in our own country. And so uh, that's really why we're, we're looking at it today. So lobster, crab and scallops. Lobster, crab, scallops, Which whatever are, else we get. Yeah, the but, idea is to promote them. Well, exactly. I mean, there's <coughs> mussels, there's oysters. Don't forget Welsh cockles. Welsh cockles. From the Gower from, Peninsula. From, from the, the best. estuary as well. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Um, so many different types of shellfish which we can actually focus on but, but for today today we just got um, what we've three got things here. yeah okay um, i mean the funny thing is that people are not eating our own seafood we import seafood we import we seafood. export seafood but we don't seem to want to eat our own seafood as much as there's availability and it's the great what we call the great british seafood paradox you know most of this wonderful product harvested on our doorstep <coughs> goes abroad and yet yeah. we'll go on holiday and we'll eat those, those very products. Absolutely, products. I know for a fact that we eat you know British, I mean? British cuttlefish in Spain and Portugal. In, yeah, but it all went from here. Right. And the same with spider crabs spider as crabs. well. Yep. I mean, the, the Lynn Peninsula in, in North Wales is absolutely heaving with spider crabs this time of the year. But can we find them in, uh, in fishmongers and restaurants? No, Not I really. can't even get them in the we restaurant. Can't even get them. Cannot so, get them uh, because they're all gone. So many opportunities so there which we can play with. I'm going to make a bit of noise. So I'll get on with the noisy bit first. I'm making a simple curry. Now, the term curry. I know in Britain the term curry is used freely as a representation of Indian food, but it's not so. Indian food is not all about curry. Uh, curry always must consist of coconut milk and coconut cream, which is what the Asians do. The rest of Southeast Asia makes the real curries, where the term did come from India. So we are going to make a curry. It's a very simple one. I'm going to put some turmeric powder in there and uh, some red chili powder. Okay bit like that, bit of heat there, not too much. In that same container, I'm going to put a chopped onion. And this is, of course, going in raw, whilst I get the pan ready with the other stuff. So a bit of onion here. And obviously, it's, it's important, really, when you're, when you're preparing a curry, Cyrus, is, uh, is not with, with seafood, it's not to have too much heat there. To no. To detract from the actual flavor of because the seafood itself. That is where the mistake starts, because yeah. We can destroy the seafood, so, uh, and of course our seafood is very delicate, whereas where I come from and the tropical seafood is a little bit stronger. Right, okay, so, so it'll take those, those spices It can handle it, more. but still I think people do tend sometimes to make a mistake of overly spicing the product. Yeah. As a result, the enjoyment is half there. In Indian cuisine, um, do you serve much raw seafood? 
I mean, like oysters or... Um, the, I mean, even if you get oysters, I mean, you get plenty of oysters off the coast of Goa, but they are not farmed, so they are farmed on rocks. Right. And what they, what the locals would do is to hack them off the rocks and bring it to you. So they're virtually going like, growing like barnacles on rocks, you know. So well, not a cultivated oyster, a wild oyster. Well, they have, they've got a very few, I think they're just starting somewhere in India. But uh, we used to buy them. And Mike, I'll tell you, I used to buy a thousand for a pound. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. that's, that's cheap seafood, isn't it? Yeah. About, about that size meat in no, Goa. No, that's incredible. And um, they go early morning when the tide is out. Yes. And they, and they, they, they them. hack them off, they bring them in a pail to your house. They're still yeah. alive, yeah. but they bring them in a pail. And um, so... Wonderful. And of course, oysters in, in the UK used to be the poor man's protein, didn't they? You know, they yeah, absolutely was. Coming. Victorian times. The, 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 here in London, in the East End, I think every street corner at one point had, a, had an oyster stall on it. And of course, they were the poor man's food, as, as were herring and things like that. So um, imagine how it's, things it's have changed. Sort of come full circle, you know, that seafood is starting off, you know, life years and years and generations ago as a, as a staple protein source. But when we now when come into, uh, into high cuisine. When we came to England and we do stay in Hackney. Yep. And I still remember there were carts outside every pub selling whelks and cockles and I didn't know what whelks were. I <laughs> not used to it, yeah. But they've all gone now. Yeah. There's not one selling cockles and clams and uh, whelks and all of that. And it's a shame, isn't it, that uh, those yeah. traditional, um, what we call sort of sea seaside seafood species in the UK have, have disappeared off the menu. And um, I mean, just coming back to the Welsh coastline, whelks again, you know, huge amount of, uh, of whelks um, caught off the Welsh coast. Um, and the oysters, of course, you know, um, very, very famous for, for oysters up in, uh, in Menai. Um, wonderful oysters being produced up there. Is there something that we need to do to start bringing these things back? You know? Yeah. Maybe modernize them a bit from the typical, you know, boiled products. But they were full of nutrition. They were full of packed with all sorts of minerals and nutrition for they're people the, to have a healthy life. They're the ultimate superfood, really. You know, you know they are, yes. you're talking about, you, know, you talk about various vegetables being, being superfoods, but really, you know, you've got a wild, unadulterated product here, which has spent most, well, all of its life. Um, especially in Welsh waters, feeding off the, this sort of smorgasbord of, of nutrition that comes down from the, from the Gulf Stream all the way down through the, uh, to, to the Irish Sea. So incredibly nutritious waters, you know, um, mussels, uh, for example, uh, that, you know, they, they thrive in those waters. And again, such an affordable shellfish. I mean, we haven't got any here today. But they need that. Mussels need that kind of water. They, they need, need that water. Yeah, and of course, water. very environmentally friendly as well because they're filter feeders. So they're naturally cleaning the water and, and, and creating an environment themselves. But what people, yes, that's what I was coming yeah. to. What people forget is where there are mussels, the starfish come in, the, starfish the other in, fish yeah, come in because they are feeding on the mussels. And you have this whole ecosystem. The ecosystem development. Especially around on the, on the mussel farms where, um, a bit like Swansea docks, where they've got mussel farms there and the, uh, the ropes hang down in the water. Um, and you, you, the mussels seed naturally onto the ropes, so they're there, the, the spat are in the water. And then they, they grow on the ropes and, well, you've seen for yourself. Yeah, I've seen for um, myself, You yeah. know, about 14, 15 months, you've got a, a, a harvestable mussel. But the, the ecosystem and the biodiversity that they bring to that area is incredible. So it's, um, it's a win-win. It it's a pity, really. We need to really educate more. We do. So, I think, yeah, go on. Ooh, you yes. carry on, carry on, carry on. No, I was just going to say that I think um, a way of approaching seafood, um, rather than, which, you know, the traditional stalls, the, the seafood restaurants, the fantastic seafood chefs that, that there are in Wales, I think a, a way of actually bringing it very closely to the, to the consumer is street food. Um, and, and cooking mussels and oysters and squid and, um, and mackerel and things like that, very, very simply, but in a way that people can appreciate and eat quickly because they're on the move, they have busy lives, and perhaps not at the moment, but do you know what I mean? And, and also to, you know, to simplify them. Simplify, yeah. Just so they, they can perhaps eat something like a, at Abergavenny, they'll come and have one of your, your shellfish dishes or a little bit of, um, yep. of chili mackerel or something like that, and they'll go, oh my God, that's absolutely fantastic. And can I take it at home? Can I, can I do that at home? Um, and as long as they can access the product, then of course well, it's very You're making a very simple curry. There's nothing to it, as you saw, turmeric, chili powder and coconut in yeah. there. Simplicity itself. Yeah, really, and onion. It? And then in here, just cumin seeds, curry leaf. If you don't have curry leaf, don't use them. And I poured it in. We got a lovely color because of the 
quality of the chili powder. Lovely and a lovely aroma yeah. coming off that as well. So next is our lobster. I do not uh, use uh, boiled lobster meat, so I've you taken take them off. raw meat out. Yeah, so as you know, Mike, I don't like killing them when they <laughs> like, yeah. So I put them in the That's freezer. Fair enough, yeah. yeah, I put them in the freezer. Which is the right thing to do. And then they, they go off, they go quietly down, and then I take the meat out. Yeah. Uh, because the raw meat, of course, the taste is all in our hands now. And the shell has just been boiled and kept. So we'll, uh, I'm going to saute. I've got some cumin seeds and chili there, chopped green chili and cumin seeds. Okay, and in goes our. So I just had the butter slightly caramelized. Just so that butter's foaming a little bit, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, just foaming, and it's just getting that nice, uh, you know, burnt butter taste. But that's the burn was at. The burn was at, but yeah. not so much, not too much. So just not let it agitate too much. Now I can take the take the heat up more slightly. Okay, so not to agitate it so that it starts to. And that lobster you just want really only just cooked through. I'll you? put a few drops of lime juice in it. Right. To prevent it from oxidizing. Okay. So it doesn't oxidize. Because it's out of the shell. I mean, there's such a high protein there. Yeah. It will oxidize very quickly. It's quickly. very concentrated, isn't it's it? Very concentrated protein. Like in all shellfish. But unlike what people think, people think shellfish is so high in uric acid. That is not good for you or it's not good for people with uh, gout and other things, yeah, but it's also high cholesterol. Yeah. But it actually has the good cholesterol in it. It's, it's the right sort of cholesterol, isn't right it? Sort I think of that's something, something that's really important to get across <laughs> to people who might be a little bit perhaps reticent yeah. about trying shellfish through the misinformation they've heard. You know, that's it. It is the right sort of cholesterol, and, sure. and eating prawns is not bad for you. <laughs> it's um, it's no. just one of those, you know, shellfish is one of those things which I think has been misrepresented over the years. It is. It um, is, unfortunately. And it, it's a job to get people thinking in the right way again about how to use it and how to utilize it. And of course, the, the amazing amount of uh, vitamins and minerals that they bring as well, you know, copper and vitamin B12 and selenium and iron and zinc and all these things which, for a balanced diet, yeah. really, you've got it in one package. So, uh, what are you doing now? Just so what I'm doing is a bit of cream, not too much. Yeah, this is when you're eating lobster, you don't think of the calories. <laughs> So this is the unusual bit about what we are doing today. Yep, so that's your curry leaves going in. No, that's fresh coriander. Fresh coriander, sorry. Okay, so that's done. Let's uh, fill the lobster up. There's another minute there and then we'll put the, we'll put our uh, eggs. So these are eggs boiled for just six minutes actually. Mm -hmm. So very lightly, lightly boiled. Good, so this is a shell that you've just literally roasted off, is it, or you... No, I, I, I boiled the shells you off. You boiled the shell off. Yeah. So, we got the... spoon that meat in. The spoon that meat in. It's a pretty looking dish as well, isn't it, when you... Um, well, lobsters are. I mean, lobsters do bring about that mood in your... They're such a beautiful creature anyway, and yeah. they, um, when they're prepared like this, sort of naturally in the shell. It's um, it's just so a delight to in see. In case a viewer is wondering, the claws are already chopped and gone inside. Yeah, yeah. the claw meat is, is gone in this part of it, yeah. isn't it? But we, this time we use these, uh, what do you call them, injured, damaged? Yeah, we, we tend to, in the industry, we tend to call them cripples. Because cripples? They, yeah. So they have because they've lost a claw. They lost a claw through fighting. I mean, the lobsters are a very, a very aggressive creature. Yes, territorial, no? Very territorial, yeah. yeah. And. Um, you know, I, when I have them in my, my lobster tank, my homarium at home, you know, where we're putting, taking them out to, to restaurants and fishmongers, they, if, they, if they weren't banded, if they didn't have the bands around the claws here, yeah. um, they, you know, they do make a mess of each other. The, will they really tear each other apart? Oh, they will. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're very, very aggressive things. But if they're together, yes, naturally, isn't it? Yeah, but then they keep their distance, you know. If, unless in the sea, they have a bigger distance. Yeah, they have their little areas, and uh, we catch a lot of our room on the east coast. Right. We catch a lot so of that's where I've got. Eggs. That's going in Beautiful. the oven. So that's um, that's going to go in for how long, Cyrus? Just enough. Well, that, I mean, the meat is warm already. Yeah. So I've got it at a high temperature, 220. So all I want is a good glaze. So a good fierce glaze on the. That's on the just good glaze. That's all yeah. we want. We don't want any more than that. Sure. We are onto the curry now, and. Um, I've got these very, very soft boiled eggs, as you can see. Okay, the yolk is still very soft inside. Yeah. Uh, this is traditional, putting the potatoes in. Now, this curry comes from Kerala. So, Kerala is the point where the Portuguese landed first. Okay. 
So they must have brought the potatoes from South America to that coastline to that, to first. That coast to that yeah. coastline first. But prior to the Portuguese, uh, Saint Thomas came to Kerala in the first century and set up Christianity there. Right. So before the West knew Christianity existed, it Kerala was, all, was already was all, practicing. They were ahead of the game. Yes, and the Jews came before that. So we have Jews coming to Kerala 200 BC. Right. And uh, sorry, yeah, uh, bef sorry. How would I say minus? But before, before the death of Christ. Yeah. Right? And they've been there. And uh, the oldest synagogues, one of the, some of the oldest synagogues in the world are in Kerala. That's so nice. they came from Israel, so the Ben Israeli Jews and the uh, Iraqi Jews right. and the Syrian Jews. So they, they, they came from Syria, Iraq and Baghdad and we call them Baghdad. So, so Kerala then really is, is a very multicultural... Always was, always was. ...background in, as, you know, in terms of the overall Indian subcontinent. Yes, because even when the Arabs came first, they came to Kerala because Kerala is the home of cardamom right. and coffee. Okay. Okay. So the trade began in Kerala. It's, it's the seat of spices in India. Yeah. And, and of course, I suppose, you know, a, a very accessible area port-wise as well. You know, oh, yes. A lot of, of trade. Easy, lots easy of ports. Trade lots there. of ports there. Two big ones, Calicut and Cochin, of course, were the prime targets for everybody. So what I've done to the scallops yeah. is uh, applied a bit of turmeric and lime juice, okay? We do that to all shellfish, chicken, etc., to kill salmonella. Right, okay, so the, That's the, the Indian is way. then a, a natural antibacterial. It's a natural antiseptic and an antibacterial. It yeah. destroys salmonella. And it also al doesn't allow the meat to lose too much liquid. Right. So it's a coagulant. It also keeps it it's nice and juicy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so in there you go. Okay. One thing about shellfish, people make a mistake of overcooking them. One boil. One nice boil and I leave it inside and I'm covering the pot. Yep. There's no more boiling required. Just let that simmer. That's it. It will, it will, only, there's no simmer here because it's induction. Yeah. But the latent heat in the curry. We'll just keep that. We'll, we'll just keep it cooked. Yeah. We'll take it over and cook it. So in two minutes we'll have it ready. In the meantime, let's do. We're going uh, to the crab now, are we? We are going to do two crab salads. So I'm doing, now this is in my new book, which is over there. Uh, Sans the crab. Okay. So. This is what it is. When you follow a recipe, you adapt as yeah. you go along. So what we have got here is I've got crab meat, brown crab meat. So mm -hmm. it's got the whole of the crab meat in it. It's not just the white meat. I think people should be eating more brown meat because Definitely. it's got more nutrition. Yeah. A little bit of chopped coriander, shredded tomato, mango, green chili, and uh, fennel, fresh fennel. And in there, some uh, fresh red onion. Okay, the red onion the crab. I've got a green dressing here with herbs. Okay, so it's just a mixed herb dressing. So that's just olive oil and... Uh, olive oil and thyme and parsley and a ran through it and a bit of coriander. And um, all I need is a bit of lemon juice in it. I think it's worth, worth noting actually, we're obviously using brown crabs here today. Um, yes. Which are the, you know, the, the, the most common sort of indigenous uh, crab around the, the UK and certainly in Welsh waters, but recently we've had um, a lot of spider crabs, you know, certainly up in, the, well, I think all up and down the Welsh coastline. Um, and I've been working Sorry. um been working with um, the, the Port to Plate initiative um, run by Mentor of Business uh, in Wales. And uh, we've been looking at ways of trying to get these spider crabs um, into into restaurants and making them more accessible because at the moment there are there are bycatch to the crab of the brown crab and lobster fishery. Is it really? But we went out on a boat that primarily. Yeah, we were there. They were going for export. Um, they were. They, they were all went for export. They were selectively fishing those for export. Um, but I think there's a huge opportunity because I think spider crab would go equally well. Oh, well, um, and the spider crab meat is just these, awesome. Uh, it's so much. Well, it. I mean, this is sweet meat, but the spider crab to me has got a, a totally different flavour and. Uh, it would be great if we could uh, we keep more of the things in the UK and um, and introduce yes. people to it because they're yes. again very affordable as well. And not just that is it represents a culture that needs to come back. It does, yeah. You know we've lost our so seafood eating culture in the UK and um, compared to so many of our continental cousins, you know they eat so much more seafood than we do. And they take hours. And they take hours. Yeah, quite. <laughs> <laughs> Just a simple, very quick salad. Okay. Because the restaurant's shut, I don't have much uh, garnish here. But that's a Beautiful. crab salad with red onion, 
tomato, red onion, tomato, raw mango, semi raw mango, and a nice herb dressing. So make your own dressing. If you need a dressing recipe, just follow my Instagram. I've got a recipe just put today on the post here. Yeah. It's a simple recipe for uh, dressing. And uh, it's just great what we can achieve and what we can do. And have a look here. So what we've got the... Uh, we've got these beauties ready the Welsh, here. Welsh lobster thermidor coming out. Oh, and it's not a thermidor, as you said. It's a, it's a it's Welsh a, it's chili cheese chili, lobster. Chili cheese lobster. May I have that plate, sir? You may. Thank you. There we go. That looks amazing. Again, oh. beautiful. Oh, no, no. This plate is good. Right? Now, to see if we can lift it without damaging it. Okay. That is a sight for sore eyes, as they say, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is, Mr. Warner. It surely is. We put that on the side. We put some more meat on you, sir. And you are on this side. So probably worth saying, actually, about the, the Welsh lobsters. Um, again, through the Port to Plate initiative and Mentor Business, have worked with Welsh lobster fishermen um, to come up with the, uh, the branding and banding. So you might have seen on the lobsters, the live lobsters earlier, the, the Bowith Moor... Um, Cymru, uh, the, the Welsh seafood branding on the lobsters, which, um, you know, they're the same species all around the UK, but for Welsh fishermen, of course, that, that branding scheme then identifies the lobster, taking it forward to, uh, to, the, to the consumer uh, or to the chef who's going to use it. So, good, really good PR for them. There's our lobster. That looks incredible. Nice garnish. Simple. Want to try that? I do. Is any good? I was, I was wondering when you're going to ask me, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Now. Yeah. But with that cheddar. But it's not overpowering. You've got no. Every, you've got no. every flavour coming through. You've got the you've but got you, the lobster. You want that lobster you've got coming the cheese, through. You've got the coriander, and then right yeah. at the back, you've got a little hit of chili. A little bit of chili at the back. I mean, coming through, and and I love. It. I'm a great chili fan, so that's really staying with me. And um, I'm actually already wanting some more of it. <laughs> well. So here in this bowl now, Mike. Yeah. What I've got here, Sorry. so what we're doing very quickly. Again, we've got our brown crab meat, diced tomato, coriander, green chili. And uh, what I've got here is a garlic and tomato mayonnaise. Yes, and that will go really well with the brown meat. That will well. go beautifully with the brown meat. And I think it's a, it's, a, it's a dressing that is so suited to having a different take on a cocktail. Very much like. so, yeah. Well, you, on, a, on, a, on a crab cocktail or a lobster cocktail, you usually have traditionally in the UK that sort of merry rose sauce, don't you, with the Worcester, yes. Worcester sauce? Worcester sauce, sauce, Tabasco. Yeah, yeah, Tabasco, and um, it's so nice to have a, you know, a variation on that. But we've got a kick. We've got the kick coming out of fresh green chili. Yeah. Rather yeah. than Tabasco. Yeah, and it's a different kick as well, isn't it? Well, it's a different kick because it hits you and then doesn't do anything else. Yeah, it's just there. I mean, it's um, it's, just it's there. not overpowering. It's because not, if you have, yeah, if it's you not have aggressive a, on your palate, is it? No, and that will hurt you back in your throat after that. Yeah. So. So easy to put together. So if somebody has bought dress crab. All they got to do is to have a little bit of imagination yeah. afterwards. And it's so and easy. keep a few things ready. And once you've got a few things ready, all you need is to just piece it together. Yeah. So. And, and having, the, having the crab ready dressed, like we've got here, it's just. It's magic. You know, that's so easy just to go and buy, it's really mm -hmm. ready prepared. What I forgot to put on this salad was mint. Ah. And I make mistakes all the time. Yes, mint would really sort of finish it. Yeah, so just if people look at the recipe in the book, they say, oh, he didn't put any mint in it. Yeah. There was mint there was, kept. There was mint there. But Mr. Well, Nodiwala forgot. Well, he just, just got a little bit of... Uh, yeah, he, he forgot. Of that. So there we go. Beautiful. Crab mayonnaise with a difference. Crab salad. Crab salad. Uh, chili. Lobster. And the uh, And the curry. Good, so that, um, 
That curry will have inf infused the scallops now, won't it? Oh, yes. So you infuse everything. The egg will be slightly oh, more yeah. cooked now. So it's just all just sort of finish the eggs off, I suppose, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, and, and the, the potato as well. The potato is just underdone. As you can see, the scallop is nice and soft. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's not rubberized itself, and that is very easily done. Right, so we've done quite well, actually. We've got four lovely preparations there. I think that looks fantastic. You've done amazing. We've got a scallop, egg and potato curry, Kerala style. we got baked lobster there. Uh, we have a crab salad, crab with garlic, uh, tomato, mayonnaise. And we have the salad there. That is, uh, of course, uh, again, a good old brown crab with uh, finely sliced onion, tomato, mango, fennel for extra flavor. Yeah. So if fennel will draw the crab meat out, yes. it really draw the crab meat out. It's such a good one to see. Yeah. So, oh, it's great. Yeah. And it's it. my good. Hi everybody. Yes. Hello everyone. I hope they enjoyed the video, everybody. The book I was referring to, which is not shown in the video, unfortunately, Mike, is that book. Right. Which is my new book, The uh, Simple Spice Vegetarian. And um, uh, from the vegetarian book, I picked up the recipes and then put crab or scallops or, uh, you know, we did the lobster as well. So I think yep. uh, one book, but you can adapt. So people have been asking loads of questions. It's been fantastic. It's been fabulous. It's think... really, yeah, it's been replying really to good questions. I mean, just, just one there I noticed coming up uh, recently, Cyrus. There was a, a guy, I can't remember his name, but he asked about the scallop curry um, and what alternative fish, white fish, he could actually yeah. perhaps use in that. And I, I suggested monkfish because that would, would that hold together quite well in the curry, wouldn't it? Monkfish should hold together extremely well, but you should remember that monkfish goes like rubber if you overcook it. So I did reply to him. I did reply that once the curry is to the boil, put your fish inside, switch off and leave it covered for a few minutes. And, uh, but there's a lady called Susan who's very keen that there should be fishmongers in Abergavenny. And I think that's yeah. very essential. But I, I, I have the question, do the locals support local produce like that? So we need the public itself to support the fishmonger if the fishmonger comes into town. And yeah, then, uh, I mean, I think that's that's the essence of it, isn't it? It's, it's actually having access to the product. And I, I, in some of the questions, especially to Susan, also to Peter Jones, I think it was, um, I came back with the, you know, the, the story that actually because everything has been so exported and, and driven to that, that export market, it just hasn't been made available to, to the local people in Wales. And so it's a long, it's a long story. It's a long, long road to go down. It's not a quick fix, but. Yes, it is indeed. But that's the. If for the farmers market. Yeah. I think it's open and for producers. I, I think the easier it's going to, you know, it's going to be to get that supply going. True. Are you, are you cutting off, Mike? Are you breaking off by any chance? No, I've got you there. Oh, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. No, I think it's very sensible. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that uh, uh, a video like ours and the discussion we've been having is creating so many lovely questions. So uh, people asking, can we order Welsh fish online for delivery? Do you have anybody in Wales that yeah. does delivery, Mike? Door to door? Well, I think... The best, I think there are, and the best thing to do is to go onto the uh, the Facebook page of Ports to Plate, which is the uh, the initiative we spoke about in the video. Um, and Ports to Plate actually has an interactive map um, of Wales and where you can find a fishmonger, an independent fishmonger, um, close to you, and where you can go and access some of these products. And that also, we should be able to tell you where you can buy online, because buying online today, as we know, certainly in the last six months, has become a very important thing. But Vince Sullivan apparently does supply fresh fish in Wales. That's what uh, Michelle Wheatman is saying. Yes, but that was in Abergavenny, wasn't it? Yes, but that's uh, Vince Sullivan is not far from there. He's always been a All great right. supporter of our whole industry, the hospitality industry. I'm sure that he can, they can, they can answer questions. Though Vin yep, himself, sure. I don't know what he does these days, but his company is brilliant. I mean, they've always been at the forefront of Welsh produce. Yeah, and also uh, I think uh, Blenarvon as well um, do a, an online service, which um, you know, which people can look at. But I would I would encourage people to to engage with Port to Plate on the social media, Facebook page, uh, Instagram, and Twitter, because there's an ongoing narrative there about Welsh seafood, 
um, and how we can actually um, engage with the consumer more. So that's a really good source of information if people want to, to access uh, online very quickly. And I mean, people should be eating more cockles and clams and whelks anyway. Because oh, yeah, I, mean, it's, I mean, the good thing about Welsh seafood is its diversity. You know, there's just yeah. so much there. Um, and all throughout the seasons as well. So, uh, yeah. yeah, we should be, we should be really know, embracing we it. Time when we filmed the Incredible Spicemen and back-breaking labor, I tell you, picking those cockles from the peninsula, from, on the Gower flats, you know. Unbelievable hard work that is. But seafood, that's so amazing. I was tell, telling somebody that if they use, the ladies allergic to mussels, but if they use whelks and cockles instead uh, or clams instead of uh, mu mussels, they must soak them well. Mike, how long should it be soaked for them to release the sand, roughly? Yeah, I mean, I, you could, there's several different things you can do. I mean, just putting them in, uh, in fresh water is one. Some people like to add a bit of semolina or flour and it helps them as they actually pump that water through, it helps them take the grit out. And what you should, and a few hours is normally fine. Um, and what you find is you, you end up with some very clean cockles and um, a little bowl of sand afterwards. That's, that's what should happen. But they um, do die in fresh water. They, they vary. In do fresh they water. In fresh water. Yeah, you, you can do it in fresh water or salted water. It's, it doesn't no, matter. No. The question is, do they die in salt, fresh water or they don't die in the... Yeah, well, you, they, they will die if you leave them in there too long. Of course, that's the, you know, how we, um, you know, how we actually, uh, or how the commercial fishing industry will, will kill crabs is to, is to, you know, bathe them in fresh water. But uh, okay. for cockles and clams, yeah, it won't matter just for a, a few hours. Okay, I think that's brilliant, actually. So there are lots of questions. I mean, I'm not... Add, add some flowering. Lots of questions still coming in. I think people are still very interested in what... Yeah, I'm they are. About. But it's good. Where are we? Very happy with that. Yeah, so I'm, um, I'm just looking at, looking at some more of these questions, Cyrus. Yeah. Um, has anybody got any questions about recipes? Because, um, you know, there's recipes you did on the video. I mean, you've obviously got a whole wealth of, uh, of other stuff there, which you can, uh, you know, which you've used in your other books. And uh, where, where can people access those recipes, Cyrus, if they don't possess a copy? If they don't possess a copy, they actually, if they buy a copy, the thing is that if they buy a copy and, and uh, mention Abba Give Any Food Festival, we are donating two pounds per copy sold to the action against hunger, to, to battle the hunger crisis that we've got at the moment. And right. uh, so, uh, log on to mrtoddywala.com, www dot of course. But otherwise, um, we'll speak to Kim. Kim, who's organizing the whole video and everything else. Kim, I'm, I'm happy to give Kim a few recipes which you can share with people who have logged in and wanted to yep. come on the program. We'll do that anyway. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so... Abergavenny can handle that. I, they can write to me. I can put the recipes on and they can post, post it on the website. So the Food sure. Festival website can have the recipes. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you can also, I mean, my website, um, a passion for seafood.com. Um, if people want to find out about the fishing industry in Wales uh, or any other part of the UK for that matter, um, do follow me on, on my social media links as well. And quite happy to answer, answer questions anytime. So, uh, yeah, a passion for seafood.com or at a passion for seafood. And please follow me on Instagram as well is chef Cyrus underscore Todivala. And I have loads of videos on Instagram that I, you can share, ask questions. And I do take requests, <laughs> unfortunately, which puts me under pressure. But uh, <laughs> we, could do, we could do more seafood, Mike, on my Instagram. We've done quite a few. There's one more coming up very yeah. soon. There's one coming up very soon, and uh, we did a chili crab uh, with noodles from a lovely oh, crab. Lovely. Foy, actually, not Welsh this time, but Foy. But uh, we can still use Welsh crab and uh, do the noodles. So there's lots going on. I mean, if people would like to follow me, by all means, thank you very much. And uh, ask questions. We are always there to answer and always there to do different things for people because for one thing, Mike, we cannot let the fact go that we are passionate about promoting all things British to the British public. And the whole yeah. thing is the British public needs to get as passionate about our own produce as we would like them to. And that is where it all starts. It does. It does start there. And it's not just seafood, of course. It's all the, the other wonderful produce that, uh, that, Welsh, um, that comes out of Wales. And, you know, I think seafood over the years has, has been the poor relation because... Uh, 
it's uh, you know it's, it's sort of lagged behind a little bit but you know with the right um, you know the right uh, social engagement and what we're doing now with videos and things I think that should all turn around yes I hope so Mike I hope so. I, I think so. Hope very so. positive about it. Yeah, I think it's positive because people like you have got directly involved with the fishermen themselves and bringing the port to plate and actually making it happen. So yeah. I think I think it's it, all starting. I think it's brilliant. It's about storytelling and it's about making remaking that connection, reconnecting people to the to the producer, whether it's a farmer or a fisherman. And um, it's a great story which people love. And of course, once you once you actually take that product and you end up cooking it, then um, it's 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 a it's a really good journey. Yes, I hope. I mean, hopefully, we can do a few more videos. I mean, if somebody <clears throat> sponsors us again, we'll go around the coastline. Actually, Mike. And actually yeah, that's a great meet idea. Fishermen, meet people, meet more and more uh, lovely, find more and more lovely produce and cook it directly on the jetty or wherever else. Yeah. Yes, and I think it's it's really important to uh, to be as inclusive as possible for for all parts of the coastline. You know, because lots of little communities, um, you know, have their own local things, their own local dishes, their own local seafoods, uh, different fish and shellfish are seasonably and local, locally available. Um, so uh, yeah, it'd be lovely to do a, some sort of tour around, wouldn't it? Yeah, do that and then twist it slightly, give it a little bit of an Asian twist, make it more exciting <laughs> sometimes. Like uh, yeah. the gentleman who is the king of the cockle pickers on the Gower, his name was Andre. Andre has been picking cockles for 45 years. His fingers are as ballooned as you can imagine. <laughs> he had never eaten anything except black pepper. On his cockles, really? Put chili powder. He was blown away. You see, he said, oh, I never thought they taste that good. So I think you know well, people you... must experiment. That's that's education, isn't it? And it's lovely when a producer actually says that. So yeah. I think we're um, we're nearly done, Cyrus. We've answered yeah, a lot of questions, done. and um, it's, yes, it's probably time to uh, give somebody else the stage. Yes, sir. I have to run back to work as well, so I'm back to the kitchen in a little while. So thank you, everybody. Yes, I think we're... I know yeah. you can't, uh, I can't see everybody, but enjoy yourselves, have fun, have a fabulous weekend. See you at the restaurant. It's a typical Abergavenny weekend, and I hope to see many of you at our restaurant, actually, in London also. So take care. Thanks, Mike, very much for joining yeah, me. Well, thank you. I look forward to seeing you all next year. De definitely. Ah, of course, I'll see you many of many often before that. Well, before but, then, but all the other people, yeah, look forward to Abergavenny 2021. Yeah. All the best, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Take care. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.